Hello and welcome back to my channel. In the last episode I showed you how I was going to mill the teeth and the tiny gears that will control the timing on my fingers as they open and close. This episode is the first of a three-part series that will detail how to fabricate a prosthetic socket from materials easily sourced from Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, and the like. Now there are of course a lot of ways to do anything, and this is just the way that I make the sockets for my prosthetic devices. I use these techniques because there is a really low overall cost of consumables compared to using alginate or silicone to mold the residual limb. On both wax and alginate, you only get one plaster out of the mold, whereas silicone you can get three, possibly four poles. But the cost of the raw materials to make alginate or silicone molds is considerably higher than that of wax. I have melted and reused this wax more than a dozen times compared to the single use of the other processes. So let's get started. For this next part, you're going to need a large stainless steel bowl that your whole hand will fit into with extra room, a large pot to double boil the wax with. To start with, three large candles depending upon the size of bowl that you're using. And you're going to need some quick set sheetrock joint compound. I usually work with the 10 minute variety. So let's set up and double boil the candles. It's really important to double boil. Remember, candles are made of paraffin, and paraffin is flammable. And we are doing this on the stove. So let's try not to have a grease type fire and burn your house down while you're trying to make a cast to your hand. Once you have a bowl full of hot wax, carefully move it over to your work surface and let it cool down a bit. I usually pull the bowl out of the pot and trade the hot water for cold at this point to speed up the cooling process. Don't use ice water, just cold water. If you cool the wax down too fast, the crystalline structure of the wax will become compromised and the wax won't really ever harden. If that happens, you'll have to start over by heating the wax up above its melting point and breaking the temper. The cool thing about working with wax is that you can do it over and over with little to no negative consequence. I usually wait until a thin ring of cooled wax starts to form around the edge of the bowl, and the top surface just starts to skin over. That's about the right temperature for me, but choose your own judgment on what's too hot for you. You don't want to burn yourself. Just like Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just right. While we're waiting for the wax to cool enough, let's prep your residual limb. You want to start off with clean, oil-free hands. Next, if you have a lot of hair on your hand and wrist area, go ahead and shave it off. It'll make getting your hand out of the mold a more successful and pleasurable experience. Next, liberally apply a coating of Vaseline to your hand. Super important, be sure to coat your fingernail. I've had to redo molds because the wax really stuck to my fingernail and it ripped the wax while I was getting my hand out of the mold. Now that that's done, dip your hand in the warm wax. Be sure to get it up to your wrist, and then slowly out. Make sure that you don't have any air bubbles or mist areas. Repeat this until you have about 3 16 of an inch or so of wax built up around your hand. Now that you have your hand coated in wax, and it has started to harden, let's stick it under some cool running water just to speed up the hardening process. Now that the wax has hardened a bit more, We'll take a razor blade and we're going to make the two relief cuts to get your hand out of the mold. When cutting the wax, it's more of a stab, stab, stab motion than a slicing motion. Otherwise, you'll rip the wax. You want to do it in one operation rather than multiple slices. Otherwise, it won't go back together very well later on. Now do the other cuts, starting at the wrist and moving towards the thumb. Stop at the distal of the thumb. If everything is going well, the mold should start to open up. Now the wax is still a bit flexible, so I'm going to put my hand under some cold running water and fill the mold up. This will help the wax start to release. It's important not to have the water directly flow into the mold. It needs to flow down your wrist and hand so that the mold doesn't deform under the pressure of the water. Now start to gently wiggle your hand out of the wax. You'll probably notice that the wax is stuck a little bit to your fingernails. Be really gentle moving the wax in your hand around in order to separate them. Now if you have any hair that has managed to get encapsulated in the wax, carefully either cut the hair or pull it from the wax until you are free, and the mold can start to be removed from your hand. 
If everything goes well, your hand will just slide out of the mold and very little repair will need to be made. Now that your hand is free and while the wax is still flexible, slowly and gently close the gap of the cut. While you're holding the gap closed, go ahead and fill the mold up with cold water and solidify it up a bit more. Next, turn on the soldering iron to the lowest setting. We're going to use it to melt the wax and repair the cuts we made earlier. The lower the temperature, the better. Holding the mold closed, go ahead and dab the iron perpendicular to the cut, making sure that you're melting enough wax to bridge the gap of the cut. Now be sure to continue to hold the cut closed until the wax is solidified and the area is repaired. Be sure not to stay in one area too long. Jump around and make a lot of little stitches rather than one large stitch. Now that one side is repaired, go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Now that the mold is repaired and prepped, it's time to turn our attention to the sheetrock joint compound. Be sure to thoroughly stir the ingredients so that you don't have any pockets of dry powder in the mix. Make sure that you mix up enough to fill the entire mold. You want to make sure to do it in one mix and pour so you don't have any fragile areas. Now we're ready to fill the wax. Pour about a third of the mold. I usually fill it up to where the thumb meets the palm. Now slowly roll the wax around and evenly coat the inside of the mold and make sure that there won't be any huge air pockets or voids in the plaster. Now go ahead and add some more compound to the wax. Break the filling process into two or three steps and give it a good shake in between to get any large air bubbles out. You'll have to work pretty rapidly because the compound starts setting up as soon as you add the water. I find that I have about five minutes for this process, which in reality is plenty of time. You just don't want to get distracted while filling the wax. Now that the wax is filled, let it sit up for half a day or so before you start with the next step. That's it for this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. If you have time, put a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.